Hello students, in today's lecture, we are going to study how quantum mechanics came into being. Let us first begin with inadequacy of classical mechanics. What does classical mechanics study? Classical mechanics is dealing with the motion of bodies under the influence of forces or with equilibrium of forces when all the forces are balanced. That means the body which you are observing in classical mechanics under motion is observable by naked eye and we are uh, doing different experiments on this body having a specific mass m. Classical mechanics has successfully explained many physics phenomena like interference, diffraction, etc. But classical physics failed to explain phenomena like photoelectric effect, black body radiation etc. So because of the failure of classical physics in explaining photoelectric effect, black body radiation, stability of atoms and molecules and they giving out a spectra at a specific temperature etc. came into being quantum mechanics. Now quantum mechanics, the first thing is the particles which it deals with are of very small mass and usually in large number like quantum, quintal, large but small mass particles and how do we explain the concept of quantum mechanics? or the particle nature where we need to explain these phenomena of physics is that we are well aware of the fact that light has a dual character. Light has a dual character. At times it is behaving as a wave and at times it is behaving as a particle. It behaves as a wave at times and at times it behaves as a particle. When it behaves as a wave like interference. Here light is behaving like a wave. Diffraction. Here light is behaving like a wave. Particle. Photoelectric effect. Photoelectric effect. Black body radiation. So here particle nature and wave nature. This is the dual nature which is shown by electromagnetic radiation or light. So let us have a closer look at this particle and wave nature. A particle will be characterized by many things. First mass. It will have a mass and if a particle has occupied one definite position in space, it cannot be occupied by another particle. It will be characterized by distinct properties like mass, momentum, that is P is equal to mc, kinetic energy, K is equal to half mv square, then you can have electric charge, particle can have a charge also, particle can have momentum also. Whereas a wave, wave will be spread out in a medium. Wave can be using the principle of superposition, we can even combine two waves. Wave will be specified with amplitude, frequency wavelength, energy, momentum, etc. So this is wave nature and this is particle nature. Let us see. Wave, particle nature, mass is more important. See, particle will have mass. 
wave nature our wavelength characteristic is more important because it is wave it can even spread out in a medium with particle nature the amount of energy transaction that is the amount of energy transaction is dependent upon the change in mass with wave nature we are basically studying the path the beam is following how it is spatial coherence or temporal coherence which path it is following now particle nature and wave nature do not exist simultaneously they are complementary that means if you are observing particle nature then you are not observing wave nature if you are observing wave nature you are not observing particle nature they are complementary to each other de broglie in 1924 stated wave particle duality and he said that this can be a universal characteristic of nature but the particle under observation will be having a very small mass and electromagnetic radiations the particles like electrons protons neutrons etc they also exhibit wave nature and lewis de broglie combined both these properties and gave rise to his famous expression the de broglie wavelength that is lambda is equal to lambda is h upon p or h upon m v this is showing all the wave properties that is wavelength frequency wavelength frequency etc this part momentum is showing all the particle aspects particle aspects in the sense mass energy e is equal to mc square momentum p is equal to mc both have been combined or bridged together with the help of planck's constant and this is the famous de broglie expression planck's constant is a con universal constant its value is 6.625 into 10 to the power of minus 34 joule per second so if you note in this expression i put v equal to 0 v equal to 0 here v is 0 then lambda tends to infinity and if v tends to infinity then lambda tends to zero that means the de broglie wavelength uh, is associated with moving particles only the particles should be moving they should not be static if the particles are moving then we can simply apply the expression lambda is equal to h upon p or the de broglie wavelength and this concept gave rise to matter waves which we will discuss in the next lecture thank you